going to continue. We took a break last week from this Old Testament character series that we've been walking through with a guest speaker. Today I'm going to preach one more message in that series, and then next week I'm going to preach from the New Testament. That's what I am anticipating doing. The next week we have a guest speaker, and then we'll see where the Lord leads beginning in September. But if, I, if you would, turn your attention to the screen. I'm going to be reading from 1 Samuel chapter number 3, verses 8 and 9 in the New Living Translation. So the Lord God, or the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again, and if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. I'm going to preach for just a little while today. When God calls your name. When God calls your name. Thank you for your attention today. Thank you for your worship and your response. Long before XM Radio and before Sirius Radio, people were relegated to listening to the radio when they traveled. Anybody remember those days where you're traveling down the road and you had to listen to the radio? You didn't have a smartphone and you couldn't plug it in and listen to YouTube music or Spotify or Apple Music or whatever Google Music is. You, you couldn't do any of that. You had the radio. Or even further back, of course, you had cassette tapes and 8-tracks and all those things. I actually even saw, it's here in Olathe, at, there's, a, there's an auto museum here in Olathe on the north side. They have this car, for, I think it's from 1957. I've never seen one like it. It's a big old boat in the dash. They have a 45 record player, stock, built in. It's, I, and I don't know, and the shot, of course, those things just kind of float, so it probably doesn't even skip when you're driving down the road listening to your record. But most of us probably, we, we grew up listening to the radio when we traveled, and as you know, as you would go in and out of the, the bandwidth or the, the strength of the signals, as you're listening, everything is nice and clear, and then about 10 minutes later, starts getting a little fuzzy and a little staticky as you get further and further away from the antenna and, and the, the broadcast center for that. And, and, and if you were like me and you, was, you were traveling on a Saturday or Sunday trying to listen to football games, you'd find it on the radio and then as you're traveling, you start losing that signal. You're like, man, I'm going to miss the play, especially if it's your team and and so it's not just like change in another station. And then I would sit there and, man, I would go through every station. I would first hit the seek button and it would go through and it wouldn't find anything. And then I'd go click by click trying to find. So anybody ever been there besides me? Maybe I'm just weird. But then you get nothing but static. I used to listen to WWL. It's a radio station in New Orleans. I'm from Louisiana as as most of you know, and I'm a football fan, as some of you know, and my two favorite teams are the New Orleans Saints and the Kansas City Chiefs when it comes to the NFL, not necessarily in that order, depends on who I'm talking to as to which one I would put first, but when I lived in St. Louis, at night, after dark, it's only after dark, all the way in St. Louis, I could pick up the radio station out of New Orleans, WWL. You could tune it in, and it wasn't always the clearest, but when the Saints were playing, I want to listen to the, the home team, the home broadcasters, and hear what they had to say, and tune in, and I'd get, somebody could walk by the radio and mess it up, and it would get staticky and just be a pain. Now we don't have to worry about static. The worst thing we have to worry about is buffering figuring out how to get our device connected to our vehicle and get it plugged in or get our device connected to the Bluetooth speaker at our house and 
We have a myriad of ways in which we can listen to things. The possibilities are endless. And the challenge now is this, separating the important from the available. That not everything that's out there is important. And all of the options that we have, some of them are things we probably shouldn't listen to and it's just a waste of our time. And so with all of the options, we have to separate the important from the unessential. When I was 17 years old, I started playing the drums. I was a little late in life doing that. But we moved from Louisiana to a small church in Blue Springs, Missouri. And in that process, I decided that I would learn to play the drums. And so taught myself and just began that process. And I've got good genetics, I guess, and not too bad. My daughter and my son, they have better genetics. Some of the good stuff passed me and went to them. Didn't Anna do a great job playing and singing at the same time? She's not in here, but I'm going to give her a hand anyway. First time she's actually done that. She's been playing all summer with tracks, but then today, because our interns are gone, she's like, all right, I'm going to be singing. And that's a challenge. Some people can't walk and chew gum, much less play and sing. So she did great. But along the way of playing the drums, this was back in the days before we had in-ear monitors and those types of things. And so playing with floor wedges and real acoustic cymbals, and I have hearing damage. And there are certain frequencies that I just don't hear. And sometimes loud metallic noises are painful. It's not just that they're loud, they're painful because certain things just cause pain and certain things that I just miss out on. And we had this issue with our car. We had the brakes change and there was a piece that got stuck in there and my wife and daughter, they'd be like, you hear that? I'm like, hear what? Hit the brakes and there's some sound coming from somewhere, but I can't hear it. It's just in the wrong frequency range for me, and so I don't know what it is. So we have challenges when it comes to hearing things, whether it's hearing damage or hearing loss or just the myriad of things that are going on in our world. And in all of that, we serve a God who speaks. God spoke to Adam and Eve as we walk through this series of Old Testament characters. God walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And when they sinned, God talked to them again. And He, he spoke to them. And they had a conversation. And God spoke to Noah. God had interactions with Noah. And God spoke to Abraham and called him out of Ur, and then later he would speak to him before he went into Sodom and Gomorrah, and he would speak to him to, to take and offer Isaac on the mountain, and he would speak to him and say, now I know that you are serving me and following me. And he would speak to Isaac, and he would speak to Jacob. He spoke to Joseph. He spoke to Moses in a myriad of ways, the burning bush and various things. And he spoke to Samson's mom and our last sermon and message we did on this Old Testament series. God has given a word to Hannah, but it's not directly to her necessarily. It's through the priest, through the prophet, through the man of God. And he speaks in different ways and different messages. He never, in all of these examples, he doesn't say the same thing over and over. It's different messages and he, different ways of speaking and different ways of interaction and different times of the day. He just speaks in a variety of ways. The question may be asked, does God still speak? And if He speaks, how does He speak? And how can we recognize His voice? There's so many things going on in our world. How do we recognize when God is speaking? And more importantly, how should we respond to His voice? This message, I'm going to focus really on that last question of how should we respond to the voice of God? The context of our scriptures that I read to you today is this. Hannah had sought God for a son. She is barren. She can't have kids. And so she goes and she speaks 
or begins to pray in the house of God and she's begging God and she's pouring out her heart to him and saying, God, I want a son. Eli sees her praying and thinks she's drunk and confronts her and she says, no, that's not what's going on. I'm just praying passionately and I just need something from God. And then God speaks to him and tells her that she's going to have a son. He's going to be dedicated to the work of God. And so she dedicates him to the house of God, but she keeps him for a while. She raises him and nurses him until he gets to the age where he no longer needs that and she then takes him to the house of God. Takes her son, her only son, and leaves him there in the house of God dedicated to the service of Jesus. Or of, of He who is now called Jesus. You ever Do you know what a... Being anachronistic is, that's when you put things before they actually happen. God is not called Jesus in the Old Testament, just in case you didn't catch that. She brings him to the house of God to, to serve God. Every year the Bible would say that she brings new clothes and she would bring a coat and she would bring this to Samuel as he's growing to make sure he has what he needs. She would see him in the house of God. He is living in the tabernacle when our text takes place. So one night as he is sleeping there in the house of God, he hears a voice calling him out of his sleep, Samuel, Samuel. He gets up. He goes to Eli. Eli is presumably the only other person there. He says to Eli, you called me. And Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel goes back to sleep and he is sleeping and he hears in the middle of his sleep, Samuel, Samuel. He gets out of bed. He goes back to Eli and says, hey, you called me. What, what can I do for you? Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. He's sleeping again, and in the middle of that, he hears his name, Samuel, Samuel, goes to Eli, and Eli now perceives God is doing something, that God is the one that is speaking, that he's not just dreaming this, he's not imagining this, but God is speaking to him. And Eli tells him that when you go back to sleep, if you hear this again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel goes back to bed and once again, God calls his name. As I said, I, I want to focus on our response to the call of God when He calls our name. Understand, and, I, and I've all, I think you believe this, you know this, God is a God who still speaks. That He who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, He spoke in the past, He's still speaking in the present. That God can talk to you and I. God can minister to us, and He can show up, and He can, in, in a variety of ways, He speaks to us. And we've I've preached about that, but I, today I want to speak specifically on when He calls our name, how do we respond? The first thing that you and I need to do is this, is position ourselves to hear His voice. If God is going to speak, or if you're going to recognize that He is speaking, you have to position yourself to hear His voice. What do I mean I mean, one, one of the things that I mean is this, is you have to be in relationship with Him, that God talks to people who are His children. He talks to those who are in relationship with Him. He interacts with those who are His children. So if you want to hear His voice, you've got to be in relationship with Him. You've got to spend time with Him. You've got to know who He is. You've got to be able to recognize His voice when He speaks. 
For Samuel, he's living in the house of God. I wouldn't encourage any of you, any of you to come and move into this place and say, I, I'm bringing my sleeping bag, I'm, I'm moving into the, to the church. If you want to come and do that and do a 24-hour prayer deal and pray all night, by all means, but I just wouldn't su suggest you live here. You wouldn't get much sleep, it's noisy or scary, one of the two, and maybe both at night. Every little sound in the building creaks. I've been here late at night and the metal pops and you think, man, somebody's trying to break in. But what do I mean by being in the house of God? What I mean is showing up like you did today. That on a Sunday, you say, I'm going to the house of God to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I, I'm going to hear His voice, and I'm, I'm going to have an encounter with Him. I'm going, not just to say I've been there, not just to go through the motions, but I'm going to encounter Jesus today. And in those moments of being in His presence, God speaks to us. Part of how we position ourselves is we have the expectation that because He has spoken in the past, He will speak again. Second thing, and I'm hurrying, is acknowledge that He knows our name. This would seem obvious. It would seem, okay, God knows everything. Of course, He knows my name. But you would be surprised that those who believe that God is only interested in the big picture, that He doesn't focus on the individual. I would tell you that He knows your name today. And when He wants to get your attention, He calls your name. He desires to be in relationship with us and He knows who we are and He knows everything about us. He knows all the flaws that we have. He knows all the faults that we have. He knows our strength. He knows our weakness. He knows everything about it. And God never just says, hey you. If you've been in a situation where you don't know somebody's name and you're like, hey, uh, yeah, you. <laughs> Anybody ever done that? I've been thinking about Every service, it might be good for us to all put on name tags around here. I ask people, hey, do you know the person that sits on the other side over there? I've seen them, but I don't know their name. Put name tags on. Wouldn't that be awesome? How many of you want name tags next Sunday? Two of us. You've probably heard this, but the sweetest sound to an individual is their own name. The sweetest sound because it's like they know me. They're talking to me. It's not just a group. I don't, I don't usually do this and when I'm preaching. I mean, Kathy God is wanting to do this in your life and call names or whatever. I'm just preaching to the crowd. But You can sit there and hear somebody preach a message and go, oh, this is for somebody else. But if it's like, Austin, God is saying this to you. It's a whole different ball game. That God knows what's going on in your life. We don't lose our identity when we come into relationship with Him. We don't lose our identity when we are in His kingdom. But He calls us not to, not to put ourselves aside, but to get ourselves in alignment with who He is and what He wants to do in His life. And let me hurry. The third thing is this. We recognize His Lordship. That Eli said to Samuel when he called, say, speak, Lord. He is more than Savior. Our world is looking for a Savior, but God is looking for us to make Him more than our Savior. He wants to be Lord of our life. And I don't have time to go into this, but it means partly that God is in charge. That we are acknowledging that He is the one that is in charge of everything and we're putting ourselves under Him. We're putting ourselves in submission to Him and we're saying, Lord, You are Lord and I am Your servant. I'm here to do whatever it is You want. I'm here to do Your bidding. I'm here to follow Your direction and to follow Your instruction. And I've put three and four together, but 
How many of you have a boss you don't like or have ever had a boss you didn't like? A lot of hands. If you have a boss that you don't like and they tell you to do something, most of the time because you want to keep your job, you do it. They tell you to sit down, you sit down, but you're standing up on the inside. You're having this conversation with them on the inside. Just, you're saying the opposite of whatever you just said to them. It's not the way it is with God. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we're like. So what He's calling, when we, when we say, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant hears, we're saying, God, you're in charge. And I'm not just listening to you because I have to, but I'm also your servant. That I'm here to do whatever you want. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And lastly, as I hurry, we must tune in to His voice. I mentioned already it is a difficult process of narrowing down when God speaks and when God speaks and all of the other noise that's going on in our lives. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Got at least one amen on that. I have this bad habit. I do it at home. I probably do it other places. If I say something to somebody, we're having a conversation, and then they start talking to somebody else. If I've got something on my mind, I start tuning in to what it what I'm thinking about and what I'm focused on, I hear the words that they're saying. But I'm not listening. I know they're talking. They're having a conversation. But I'm not listening. And then, when they start talking to me and I don't pay attention, it's not until they call my name and I'm like, oh, you're talking to me. And then I start listening. Researchers would say that hearing is the ability to hear. Listening is a skill that requires intentional effort. Hearing is passive and effortless. Listening is active and intentional. Hearing is simply the act of perceiving and receiving sound waves or vibrations through your ear while listening is the act of hearing a sound and understanding what you hear. Listening involves making a conscious effort to perceive sound. So what I would tell you, it's not enough to hear. But we must listen and tune in to what He's saying. At church, tuning in to His voice. When me or someone else would say, anybody feel the presence of God? And you don't feel the presence of God. What that means is we're really not tuned in to what's going on. Our mind is somewhere else and we're focused on something else. When we're reading our Bible and we forget what we read five minutes after we read it, we're not really tuning in. We can't hear His voice. When we're praying and we, we do all the talking, then we're not tuning in to His voice. We're in the room and we hear the noise. We can hear and recognize something is going on, but we're not listening. But I would tell you when God calls your name, it's hard to miss it. When God says Chris, or Jason, or Carlos, when He calls our name, and, and God repeats it, almost every time when God says somebody's name, it's Samuel, Samuel. Saul, Saul, it's, he does this. He doesn't want you to miss it. God wants you to hear His voice and listen 
to what he's getting ready to say. And our response should always be, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God, I'm not just going to hear what you say, but I'm going to actively tune in to what you want to say. And when he calls our name, he knows where we are. It lets us know that he knows who we are and where we are, and he knows what we're going through. And I would tell you when he calls your name and he speaks to you, direction is coming. Relationship is growing and God is getting ready to do something in your life. He's not doing this. It's not just going to be the same old status quo, but God is looking to do something else and take you to a new level, to a a new level of relationship, a new level of worship, a, a new level of praise, a new level of commitment. He's looking to take us to something greater. You heard me say that, but are you listening? Do you really believe God knows your name? He's the God of the universe. He has a lot of stuff to do, but He knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. When people came around the front earlier, I don't know what you needed. God didn't tell me what you needed. And before that moment, maybe you haven't even told God what you needed or what you wanted, but He already knows. He already knew that you were going to come to the front. He knew I was going to ask you. I didn't even know it. Because He wants to be in relationship with us and He wants to change our lives and he wants to change our destiny I could tell you of why don't you stand together I could tell you of numerous times in my life where God has spoken and in almost if not every case maybe I'm covering my bets a little bit, but I would say every time He has spoken to me, it has changed the course of my life. That He's not just talking to talk. He's talking and He's calling our name because He's wanting us to tune in and hear what He's saying because it's going to change something in our life. He's calling us to a new level of commitment. He's calling us to a new level of relationship. He's giving us direction. So whether it's Him speaking to me and telling me to stop doing something that I was doing, or whether He is speaking and He's saying, quit your job and go do outreach full time. Or whether He's speaking and saying, give this money to missions and I'll take care of the car problem that you have. Or whether he's speaking and saying it's time to go, it's time to plant a church. Don't rule out Kansas City. Every time he speaks, he's he's changing, altering our destiny, altering the course of our lives. For Samuel, when God speaks to him, God gives Samuel a word about Eli and about what's going to happen in Eli's life. From that moment on, the Bible says people began to see Samuel as the prophet of God. He's just a child. But God has already put His call on His life and He's saying, I've got something for you to do. I'm telling you what's going to happen to the current prophet because he didn't discipline his kids, because he let them do wickedness and immorality in the house of God. He says, I'm I'm taking this away from him and I'm going to put you in his place. When God speaks, He's calling us to something greater something better I've preached longer than I wanted to 
but I feel the presence of God. And I am confident that God is speaking to some people in this room. It's not the first time, and maybe it's just a continuation of what He was doing last week. It's God ministered to us in quiet ways. And just at the pew where you were in last week, I saw God working in people's life and God placing His call to do more and to be more. This week, I want to invite you to come to the front. I want you to come and lift your hands. And I want you just to say, God, I, I want to hear your voice. God, when you speak to me, I want to recognize who you are. And God, no matter what it is that you say to me, you are Lord and I am your servant. And God, I'm listening to you. God, I'm available to do whatever it is you want me to do. God, I'm available. I'm available, Lord, to do everything you want me to do. Lord, just speak to me. Just speak to me and let me know, God. Give me direction, Lord.